Hello everyone, dear friends, today we will review a small board that will allow you to turn your personal computer into a smart home device of the TUIA smart ecosystem. By installing the board, we can control the operation of our PC not only while being near it, but from anywhere in the world where there is internet. Let's take a closer look at all the capabilities of this small board. I'll tell you what other boards there are, how to connect and how to control it through a mobile application. We will also try the possibilities of connecting to the Home Assistant Smart Home. If you have ever had a situation where you urgently need to turn off, turn on or reboot your computer or server, but you are not around and there is no way to ask anyone, this review is for you. The seller has several types of such devices. There is also a choice between the Wi-Fi version of the connection or ZigBee. You will find links to all products in the description under the video. I won't talk about the difference in operating protocols, the only thing I'll remind you is that for the ZigBee version you will need a ZigBee gateway, the link is also in the description. And I'll dwell a little on the differences between the boards. Here are the differences when purchasing the Wi-Fi version. As we see, the seller has the opportunity to buy a board that is inserted into the PCIe port of your motherboard. Here it is a small port. There is also a division into a mini version and a pro version. The mini version does not transmit the PC status, on, off, also does not have the ability to lock the on, off button, and cannot be controlled using the remote button of the 433RF remote control. If all your PCIe ports are occupied or simply don't exist, then it's worth considering the USB version. Basic will be an analog of mini. The difference in price is not very big, so I would recommend going with the full functionality of USB Pro. There are no such differences in the ZigBee version, all versions are Pro. But there is no USB connection option, you need to have a free PCIe port. They differ only in the thickness of your PC case, standard, as on this board, or small, as for this mini PC. In my review, I will consider the USB Pro version of the board with Wi-Fi connection. It comes in this bubble packaging. She can play football, nothing will break inside. It was also sealed with tape with the logo of the manufacturer Wetton, but I have already partially removed it for review. There was a sealed bag inside. Depending on the mini or pro configuration, the kit will either include a remote control or not. The control button operates at a frequency of 433 MHz, it is practically possible to connect another control panel. The diameter of the button is 50 mm. Thickness 13. The button is powered by one CR2232 battery, it is not included in the kit, which the seller warned about in advance on the product page. There is also 3M double-sided tape for attaching the control button in the place we need. There is a separate 1 meter long power cable. Standard USB, micro USB for powering the brains of the control board. Nearby lies a 30 centimeter cable connecting the control board to the computer motherboard. On the side connecting to the board there is a 4-pin connector, on the side of the motherboard there is a 2-pin connector for connecting to the power management. And 1 plus 1 to the LED indicator of the PC operation status is on or off. And the control board itself is from Wetton, which can turn any PC or server into part of the Tuya Smart Smart Home System. The dimensions of the board are 17 by 50 millimeters. On one side there are 8 pins for connecting PC control. On the other side, Micro USB is a power port. The smart module CBUIPX developed by Tuya is responsible for the brains of the device. CBUIPX is equipped with a 32 bit microcontroller with an operating speed of up to 120 MHz, 2 MB flash memory, and 256 KB RAM to support Tuya IoT Cloud connectivity. An external Wi Fi antenna is also connected to it. For mounting on or outside the case, a piece of 3M double-sided tape is already glued to the antenna. Nearby there is a reset button and connection to the smart home network. Nearby there is also a small LED indicating connection to the Wi-Fi network. Underneath is the STC8G1K08 chip. This chip is based on the 8051 architecture and operates at frequencies up to 30 MHz. It has an 8-bit central processing unit, built-in flash memory for program code, and built-in peripherals such as timers, I.O. ports, analog-to-digital converters, ADCs, communication interfaces, etc. On the back side we have power contacts. If necessary, we can solder a wire and take 5 volt power, for example, from the USB output of the motherboard, without occupying the USB port of our PC. On the left side there are pins for connection, each pin is marked with the corresponding marking, power, 
LED and plus or minus for connecting to the LED indication. I suspect that it is the connection to the LED indication for the device that triggers the PC to turn on or off. An antenna is also soldered to work with the 433 MHz control panel. The connection for my separate board and for the board that we install in the PCIe connector is practically no different. If you purchase the module in the form of a PCIe card, then first insert it into a free slot on the motherboard. And then we move directly to the physical connection with a wire to the button and LED indicator of the operation of the personal computer. Every full-fledged PC on the motherboard has a pad with pins, which is responsible for turning on, off, resetting, and an indicator for the operation of the hard drive and the PC is on. You can see where this block is located in the instructions for your motherboard. Let's open it and look, this is the block for my motherboard. Everything is simple and quite clear. If you don't have a paper instruction, then to do this, look at its full name and enter the word instruction into a search engine. But this is if you are very worried that you will do something wrong. In most cases, this block is located on the lower left side of the motherboard, and the wire headers are usually labeled. We need to find two pairs of wires. Namely power and power LED. Here in this motherboard we see the farthest pair of pins is PLED, the indicator for turning on the PC, then the farthest two pins are just the ones for turning the PC on and off. For the power pair there is no need to look for plus and minus. Since when these pins are shorted on the motherboard, the computer turns on and off. But for the LED indicator, plus and minus are important. Disconnect the wires that go to the computer's power button. Now we connect these wires to our control board. If we turn it over, we won't make a mistake where to connect it. Here on the outer pins we connect the PC on and off. Now let's connect the wires coming from our board to the place of the disconnected ones. Our board is placed, as it were, in the gap between the PC shutdown button and the motherboard. Now carefully turn off the LED button indicating the operation of your PC. On the pins going to the button there is a polarity designation, we connect it to our control board, observing the polarity. The manufacturer did not mark the polarity on the LED indicator connection pins, but it is present on the board itself. Therefore, we connect the yellow wire to the positive LED contact on the motherboard, and the orange wire to the negative one. Now we can attach the Wi-Fi antenna somewhere on the case and carefully secure the board itself. I used a small zip tie for this and secured it like this. Don't forget about power connections. You can use the cable that is included in the kit, or you can take and solder two wires to the back of the board. Connect the wires to 5 plus and ground from USB on the motherboard. Now you need to go into the BIOS of your motherboard and set the power supply to the USB port constantly. If this is not done by default, most motherboards already have this option enabled. If this is not done, the control board will not receive power, and accordingly we will not be able to control the PC in any way. To go to the BIOS immediately after turning on the PC, look at the prompts on the display. The buttons can be F1, F2, F8, F10 or F12. But I recommend starting with the Dell button on your keyboard and immediately after turning on the PC. The settings for each motherboard will be different, so I will roughly show where they are for me. For me this parameter was in advanced, APM configuration, power on RTC. You need to change it from disabled to enabled. And if you purchased a PCIe card, then you need to do this so that power on is enabled. Save and exit, save change and reset. After this, even when the PC is turned off, the control board will work. Connect to Tuya Smart. The connection and functions will be almost the same for both Wi-Fi and Zigbee versions of the device. The only difference will be from the Pro or Mini versions, as I mentioned above. If the control board has just been purchased, it is automatically in pairing mode, as indicated by the blinking blue LED on the board. If this does not happen, we put our control board into pairing mode, to do this, hold the reset button for 10 seconds until the LED starts blinking. Connect to the desired Wi-Fi network and open the Tuya smart application. Literally immediately a window popped up indicating that a new device with a PC image had been found. If this does not happen for you, click the plus sign in the upper right corner, select either the Wi-Fi or Zigbee version of any device and wait. We indicate the Wi-Fi network and its password. After a few seconds, the device will be added to the Tuya Smart Smart Home ecosystem. The name is in Chinese, I recommend renaming it. 
From the main screen of the application we can see the status of the device and, accordingly, the PC. On or off, but we can also turn on or off our personal computer. Let's go inside the device plugin. In the center of the screen is an image of a monitor with the Windows logo, and the status is written above it. PC status, on. We can turn off the PC either by clicking on the on, off button in the lower left part of the program screen. But you can also turn the PC on or off by clicking on the virtual monitor. If the PC is turned off, its status changes to OFF, and the Windows icon disappears from the monitor. The monitor just seems to be turned off. At the same time, the background of the program changes, it becomes darker. Below the monitor there is a switch called Child Lock. By activating it, we completely block the on, off button on our PC case. As you can see, pressing the button does not turn off the PC. And if you turn it off, you can now turn it on only from the application or through automation. At the bottom of the screen there is a strip with control and settings buttons. By clicking on the on, off button, we can turn off or turn on our PC. But what should you do if the PC freezes and does not respond at all to the shutdown button? There is a DP underscore Madraset button for this. By default, it is inactive, the dash is selected. But we can choose two reboot options, reset or force reset. This is like emulating the restart computer button in the installed operating system of your PC. If everything is frozen and the PC does not respond, press reset and the PC reboots. I did not notice any difference in how reset and force reset work in Windows. In the schedule settings, we can set various device operation timers, for example, turn on the PC at 12-00, repeat only on weekdays, create a note. You can also enable notification of the timer execution, or choose to turn on or off the PC. I think everyone can create a schedule to suit their needs. Let's go to the settings, there are not many of them, but they are there. The first is the relay status switch. Turn on or off the LED indicating relay operation. OFF, disabled, on, enabled. Next, we can enable or disable control from the 433 MHz remote control. By default, the feature is enabled. By activating the RF study function, we can take any remote control and pair it with our control board. We turn on this setting, take the remote control and click the button. After successfully saving the remote control code, the button will switch to the disabled status. Here, again, we can turn on child protection and look below at the log of turning the PC on and off. Moreover, this story reflects not only the switching on and off of the PC using the control board, but also if the switching on and off was performed from a button on the personal computer case. If the color in the history is black, it means it was turned on or off via a button on the PC case. In general settings, we can create a group of similar devices in order to turn them off or on at the same time, share the device with other users, check the network status, and check for updates. Auto-update is disabled, since the update may overload the control board, which will negatively affect the operation of the PC. Let's see what our device can do in terms of automation. Let's turn on the smart socket and see what automation parameters we can apply to our device. We select our device and see the following automation parameters. PC status here we can choose to enable, disable or change the status. If it was on, turn it off and vice versa. We can enable training for the 433 MHz remote control. We can schedule a PC reset, for some reason this function has not been translated. Here it's either a normal reset or a quick reset. I don't know why the on, off function is used in automation, but it is there. It turns out this kind of automation, the door is opened, the PC turns on. Let's look at the capabilities of the PC control board in the Home Assistant Smart Home. Open our server and go to Devices and Services, and go to Tuya Integration. We find our device, here it is. The actions available to us include turning on and off, and the status of the device is also transmitted. If you turn it off through the application or with a button on the case, the status will change to off. USB 1 is a reboot action, 
why is it transmitted as USB 1? This is a question for the TUIA developers. Below from the configuration you can enable child mode, locking the power button on the PC case. And setting up actions after a power failure of the control board, turn on the PC, turn off or remember the last state. To the right is the on, off log. If the shutdown is done through the control board, then the entry will look like, turned on triggered by service switch, turn on, or turned off triggered by service switch, turn off. And if you turn on and off using a button on a PC, the view will be turned on and turned off, which will allow you to monitor the operating modes of your PC or server in more detail. For its price, the PC control board really deserves attention. The first place I would use it is in a smart home control server, because if something hangs there, automation and other scenarios get lost. The second application is servers and PCs in production, which in case of failure and freezing can bring a lot of problems to the system engineer. Yes, and traveling across the whole city to reboot a frozen PC or server is also time and money. For home use I have two use cases. Let's say you were working from documents, forgot to send them or copy them to the cloud, but you suddenly needed them. The solution is simple, turn on the PC remotely, open the PC desktop through a program like AnyDesk and work with your home PC from anywhere in the world. In this case, I recommend running AnyDesk together with Windows and setting it up first. Another point is that there is a PC in the nursery, there is no need to connect control programs and so on. We create a work schedule so that the PC only works until 21-00 and then turns off. In most cases, the child will not understand that he is turning off his PC. And if he understands, then there is no point in such control. The big plus is that you can not only shut down and restart your PC correct as if from the system, but also do a hard reboot when the system does not respond. The second advantage is that the Weston control board transmits accurate indicators of whether the PC is currently on or off which is also important when working and in automation. I hope the video was useful to you and was able to reveal all the capabilities of this router. Please don't forget to like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss other interesting videos about smart and not so smart home systems. You will find all links to products in the description under the video. There is also a link to a telegram group where you will find not only new products on the smart home system but also promotional coupons and other communication and answers to questions. All the best to everyone. Peaceful skies and goodness. Bye-bye.